this continues our discussion of ARIMA models. When we are finished with all of the ARIMA models, you'll have a complete set of models that would handle most any time series that you would encounter. We're going to add a new model, the ARIMA 020 model, and this model is different because it includes a trend in your forecast. Here is a summary of the models that uh, we've looked at so far, and I'm not going to go through those again. This is just uh, for review. One thing that you will want to learn is the verbal description of each of the ARIMA models that we look at. And uh, here, here is a quick summary. <clears throat> the, f the first one, the ARIMA 000, the verbal description is the forecast is just the simple average. The ARIMA P00 says you build a regression model using the P previous terms in your time series. The third model there, the ARIMA 010, that was the random walk model and it basically says your forecast is the most recently observed value. And then most recently we looked at the ARIMA 011 which is exponential smoothing and the verbal description of that is the forecast is a weighted average of the most recently observed value and the previous forecast. None of the models that we have looked at so far have a trend built into them. You simply estimate in some way or the other the current level of the process and that becomes a forecast of what's going to happen the next period and the next period and the next period and so forth. So here is an example of uh, some data where the data is definitely trending upward and if you were to use let's say exponential smoothing to forecast what would be happening over the next 10 weeks, uh, it probably wouldn't capture that upward trend in the data. And you can also see that the trend changes over time so uh, you certainly would not want to use something like a regression line or something like that to estimate that trend because it needs to adapt uh, just like the level of the process adapts in the models that we've looking, looked at so far. So we're going to introduce the ARIMA 020 model that is a model that has a trend and when you're Forecasting with this type of model, the two in the middle there means we're building a trend into the model. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But when you have a trend, your forecast becomes the currently estimated level plus the trend. So in particular for the ARIMA 020 model, you estimate the level as the most recently observed value, just like you did with the random walk model. You estimate the trend as the difference between the most recent value and the one prior to that. And you add those two numbers together to get your forecast of what's going to happen the next period. So let's uh, look at our ARIMA notation. Re you remember that middle number, the D, tells you about whether or not you have an average or whether you have an adaptive process level. And now D can also tell you whether or not you have a trend in your uh, process. So if D is equal to zero, that means your process has a fixed average. If D is equal to one, that means the level of the process adapts over time as it did with the random walk model and as it does with exponential smoothing. If we set D equal to two, that means not only does the level of the process adapt, but there's a trend and that trend will also adapt over time and so that when we make our forecast we will create a forecast as taking the currently estimated level of the process and adding to that the trend or if we're forecasting more than one period into the future we will multiply that trend times the number of periods that we're forecasting. So for example if the trend value is 5 that says we expect the time series to increase by about five each period uh, into the future. So if we're looking at the ARIMA 020 model, the two tells us we have an adaptive level and an adaptive trend.
trend. And the forecast is the level plus the trend. We are going to estimate the level as the most recent observation. And we're going to estimate the trend as the most recent change in the process. So here is an example. We are in the second week. We can't make a forecast until we get into the second week because we need two weeks in order to get the trend. So at the second week of the process, the level is just equal to the value that we observed in the second week of the process, which in this case is 2006 uh, units of sales. So the slope that we would estimate would in week two would be the difference between what we observed in week two and what we observed in the previous week in week one. And that is six. And then the forecast that we would make at the end of week two for one week into the future would be the level of week two plus the slope of week two, which would be 2006 plus six or 2012. That is our forecast for week three that we would have made in week two. Now we're ready to say all of that uh, with mathematical symbols. And Box Jenkins is really simple and intuitive. It's just the notation is, is a barrier for most people to get into it. So once you've mastered the notation, you've really uh, got a powerful set of tools on hand. So with the ARIMA 010 model, the forecast Z hat made at time T for one period into the future. It's just the level at time T plus the slope at time T. And the level at time t for the ARIMA 020 model, level sub t is just equal to z sub t, same as the random walk model. And I'm sure I've given said this formula a few times more than most of you need to hear it, but I'd rather say it a couple of extra times and make sure that we all get it. And then the slope is just the difference between the most recent value that you observed and the one prior to that. And again, this is a repetition, but repetition may be a good thing. And here is an example um, where each week we compute the level, we compute the slope, and then we make the forecast. And then we compare what actually happened each week to what we forecast the previous week to get an error. And then we've squared the error and we've taken the entire data set and computed the mean or the average of the squared errors and then taken the square root of that to get the standard error. Now this is where the ARIMA 020 model differs from anything that you've seen so far. If you're forecasting L periods into the future, then you multiply L times that slope and include that in your forecast. So here, here's an example. Suppose we're now at looking at the end of that data set, and it's currently week 810. And our current process level, in other words, what we observed this week, is 52,203. And <clears throat> the current slope, in other words, the difference between what we observed this week and week 810, and week 809 is 81. And we're going to forecast what we think the demand will be 10 weeks from now in week 820. So the way we would say that is Z hat, the forecast, sub 810, the forecast made in week 810, parentheses 10, which says we're forecasting 10 weeks into the future, is equal to the current level plus 10 or L times the slope. So our forecast that we're going to be making for week uh, 820 is going to be 53,013. As uh, we've seen with our other models, the farther that you're forecasting into the future, 
the more the uncertainty is around that forecast and that's expressed as the standard error. So with this particular model, the ARIMA 020, the standard error when you're forecasting L weeks into the future, you get by taking the one week standard error and multiplying that times the square root of 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to L. So if we're forecasting 10 weeks into the future, we're going to compute our standard error for a 10 week forecast as 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 10. This, that sum happens to be 55. Take the square root of that sum and multiply it times the standard error. The square root of 55 is 7.42 and we multiply that times our standard error of 19.98 and it says when we're forecasting 10 weeks into the future our standard error is 148.18. So if we add three of those to the forecast and subtract three standard errors from the forecast, we get the predicted range of variation for the actual value that we will see 10 weeks from now. In other words, the predicted range of variation for Z820 is the interval that is given there.